Madeline Starr, the gold medalist in the 100 metres women's hurdles. Well, now the result of the first semi-final of the uh, sprint relay. Great Britain confirmed as the winners, 38.90. Only three qualified there, definitely. Norway and West, uh, East Germany go out. Italy and Portugal go into the final. And it looks as if there'll be only seven teams in the final. The second semi-final, the USSR. The winners there. Well, that, that's something wrong there because that's just the lane order. This is the result. France were the winners. USSR in second place. Hungary third, Spain four. And I think Spain will go through as one of the, uh, in fact, the only fast qualifier. So it looks to be as if only seven teams will line up in that final. Back at the start of the hurdles, Tom McKean's sitting with me. He's just been telling me that uh, Colin Jackson's had to spend long periods today with the physiotherapist. And the suggestion is that he's had a bit of cartilage trouble. It's not just clipping the hurdles, it's cartilage trouble. And that means that uh, Britain's other competitor, Tony Jarrett, comes very much into the reckoning because he's been getting stronger and stronger. There are three Soviets, two British, one Pole, one West German, and one Frenchman who we're looking at there, 293, Philippe Touré, number three in Europe, who had a victory over Colin Jackson in Zurich when that was billed as one of the great races. 314 is Kozieski of West Germany. There's Tony Jarrett, born in Enfield, member of the Haringey Club, getting better and better. He's number two in Europe, and he's got Nagorka of Poland on his left, and there's Kazanov, the balding Soviet Union athlete there. That's Kazanov, 647, the European indoor champion, a real flyer off the blocks. Nagorka of Poland in lane three. We've missed use of the Soviet Union in lane one. Now Tony Jarrett, six feet two, brilliant sprinter, six in the Olympic Games and first in the 89 European Cup. Kozievski of West Germany, 23. 1341 second in the German Championships but improving in this Championships. Here's the Frenchman Touré who's become a real threat. One of their great sprinter hurdlers, number three in Europe. Colin Jackson, who six weeks ago would have been the clearest favourite almost in any event to win this here. What a brilliant career he's had already. Colin Jackson's got Shishkin on his right. Britain have only ever won one gold in this. Donald Finlay, the great late Donald Finlay, 1938. So it's a tremendous lineup. Tony Jarrett in between a pole and a West German. Touré on their right and Colin Jackson. Terrific excitement in the stadium. This is uh, an event that everybody's been looking forward to. But that's the disappointing sign. The cartilage trouble, the knee bandage on Colin Jackson. Silver in the Olympic Games, bronze in the World Championship, the European record holder, the Commonwealth champion, the United Kingdom champion, the Renaissance man in hurdling in Great Britain. He's done so much. And this is a championship he wanted to win, and still might. Colin Jackson, up to the first hurdle, Jarrett is up with him, Toure is with them as well. Jarrett going well, but Colin Jackson's also going well, the two Britain are ahead. Jarrett and Jackson on this side, Tony Jarrett, and it's going to be Jackson Jarrett, one and two. 13.52, the time unimportant, but Jackson gets there, he comes back from the dead as it were, bandage or no bandage, that was very, very close, I had him ahead of Tony Jack, there can't be very much in it, and uh, Toure, who was up with them for half of the race, then fell back as the British onslaught went on, now watch this, the big German Kozievski hits a hurdle badly, Jarrett is up and clear, Toure is with them, Jackson now improvement, He's now getting his technique back. He's working between the hurdles. The two Brits are well clear from the rest of the field. Now watch the lunge for the line. I think it's Colin Jackson, then Tony Jarrett, then Kozievski. That's the one, two, three. And Great Britain have another gold and a silver medal. They've been one and two in so many events. This might have been the moment when Tony Jarrett would have thought that he could get back and win one. But that, that time is disappointing at 13.52. There is just the hint that they've ducked underneath it. They've done that before. They are both divers for the line. So if you're disappointed with the time, let's hope that they did duck underneath it. A terrific comeback from Colin Jackson. And Malcolm Arnold must have nursed him back and got him into a state where he believed in himself again. There were just doubts beginning to show.
now he's got his hurdling back to the sort of hurdling that we used to see from Skeets Nehemiah. Fluid, superb, with magnificent sprinting in between. This is Colin Jackson back to his best, and I think the clock's going to tell us that at a later time. And what a race he was given by Tony Jarrett, so much so that from here on in, he has to dive for the line, and he might just have ducked under the photo finish in doing that. What a pair. They really have been remarkable. One and two in Europe, and that is confirmed again. And I think Tony Jarrett will have his day. So when he ran 20.67 in the 3 A's 200 metres, his coach, John Isaac, said, I may have made a mistake. I might, he might have had to be a sprinter. And I've, as I've said, if he ever goes into 400 metres, <laughs> he's going to be absolutely incredible. I must say, I think that Colin Jackson won that from experience and memory because he came into the race off uh, a bad run in Zurich, a bad semi-final, but he was first to the first hurdle, which is the dominant factor. He was on top of the Frenchman all the way, and his hurdling is so clean apart from once. A brilliant run when it mattered because he's clearly not at peak. And he ran away from Touré there. Touré hit the third hurdle, but from then on, he wasn't in the event, and I think that the West German, who was uh, e started as equal sixth in Europe, I think he snatched a bronze that nobody thought he could get. Two great sprinters, incidentally. Either one of them could be in the British Sprint Relay team. Now, the time has been revised. Colin Jackson, 13.18. Tony Jarrett, 13.21. That's much more like it. 13.18, a new championship best performance to go with the gold medal for Colin Jackson and they both ducked underneath it and Kozievski confirmed for West Germany in the bronze medal position in 13.50 actually it's happened so many times before it used to happen with John Ridgen as well who's uh, injured and not been able to make the British team uh, but that's more like the old Jackson well that's doubled our gold medal telly and that's a tremendous boost to the British team